FDA food pyramid, that's not much help. Uh, I think the nutritionist speaking this weekend will have something to say about that. That could be confusing. Heard this, you'd think they were like mourning a sequoia tree or something. It was this little tree stump. That's a lot of guilt. Did you notice what she said? She goes, I need to cry. I need to learn to cry. It's so counterintuitive and so against every fiber of your DNA that you have to somehow trick yourself into doing it. That's a lot of guilt. Okay, FDA food pyramid, that's not much help. Uh, I think the nutritionist speaking this weekend will have something to say about that. That could be confusing. Uh, can you trust your doctor? Maybe not. This is, you guys have seen this, right? This is Cynthia Potier, who's a dietetic, dietetic technician of the year at St. Charles Hospital. These are both the nutrition directors. That's problematic. Okay. What is the most commonly heard statement from personal trainers? If you were in a personal training center, think about this seriously. What's the most common thing a personal trainer ever says to their clients? Who cares? I mean, you guys must have clients, right? You're like doing a curl and they're like, man, I feel it in my calf. And <laughs> you always, I don't care. If you're flexing the elbow under load, the biceps being trained, it doesn't really matter how it feels. All right? This is, this is like no pain, no gain. That's where that comes from. Exercisers tend to value or assess the, the, the value of the activity they're doing by how much pain it causes either during and or after. Big mistake. So the little pearl I'm going to give you is that fitness is the result of what you do, not how it feels. Okay? Pop quiz, do you burn more calories walking a mile or running a mile? Guess what? It's the same. Now, don't start talking to me about running efficiency and, okay, I get that. But look, it's the same because it is what you do that determines the outcome. It is the mile. It is the work you perform that determines the fitness result and the, and the energy expenditure necessary to accomplish that work. Now, yes, if you run the mile, it's faster and you get done sooner. So, it's a, you know, you burn more calories per unit of time, but you get done sooner, so it's a wash. So I just want to make the point once again that it is what you do, not how much it hurts, that, that determines the, the net result. Okay, here's an exerciser technique, forced reps. If she does eight reps on her own and then her trainer starts helping her with the ninth rep, how does that change motor unit recruitment? Are you now recruiting more fibers, less fibers? What do you think? It is a trick question. It's the same because it takes X amount of energy to do X amount of work. It's, so you have the same amount of motor units recruited but just now shared between two people. He's getting a tricep workout while she's getting a lat workout. It's the same thing. But if you're an exerciser and you've bought into no pain, no gain, the more it hurts, the better it must be. So look, this was, I think, from uh, South Korea. Uh, the, the study from two years ago that showed that for the purposes of reducing high blood pressure, four 10-minute walks a day provide the same result as one 40-minute walk a day. That's thinking like an athlete. That is pain, that is, you know, fatigue management. And to delve into this just a little bit more, the reason that being too focused on no pain, no gain leads you to bad decisions is because you will end up making decisions and doing activities that really recruit slow twitch fibers. This is just a great chart showing, you know, on the left, slow twitch, small uh, fibers, to the right, fast twitch, type 2B, intermediate in the, uh, in the middle. If you look at this, you'll notice that the neuron is bigger as you go up the scale and the axon is thicker as well. And type 2B fibers have much greater potential to hypertrophy, to enlarge, than do slow fibers. They also are the fibers that, that jack up your metabolism from training. And they are also the fibers that make you more functional. Because life is not aerobic. If you are doing something truly aerobic, it is by, by definition artificial. 
The only time that you're doing something aerobic is when you get on the treadmill and you hike your heart rate up to whatever, 75, 80%, and you hold it there, steady state, for 20 minutes, 30 minutes. That's a very artificial thing. It never happens in nature. All right? So uh, just wanted to make that point, and this is a little bit more uh, on that. Okay? Just, in other words, as the level of tension goes up, the, the, the higher threshold uh, motor units that are brought into play here and uh, it is tension, not fatigue, that recruits type 2B fibers, right? It is tension, not fatigue. And if fatigue is high enough, tension is, has an inverse relationship to tension, okay? Taking a fatigue management approach to your training is how you get high tensions, and that's how you recruit type 2B fibers, and that's how you have a successful experience in, in training. All right, a couple of good books I want to recommend to you guys. Uh, this is by uh, Dr. Stephen Long. He's a sports psychologist. We've interviewed him for my coaching community. And uh, what's very interesting about this book that's really useful is that almost all self-help psychology books deal with goal setting. They deal with the, the point Bs, you know, how to get to point B. This book deals with being clear about what your point A is your true starting point. And that's, that's an important point to make. Many of us labor under incorrect assumptions about, you know, I'm a hard gainer, or I'm all slow twitch, or I'm a geek. It's funny, I, one of my calling cards and part of my branding is that I call myself a geek. And then I just looked up the rankings for Masters Weightlifting and I was ranked number seven last year and I'm five this year. So not that big of a deal, but like it's not really a geek. You know, it's like okay. So and it just made me think, you know, maybe I shouldn't be calling myself a geek all the time because maybe that's actually, you know, uh, downwardly adjusting my self-image that will negatively affect, you know, my training. So excellent book to get.